Hi guys, welcome to The Attic. My name is Mark Jago. I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. Today we're continuing with the philosophy glossary, trying to make sense of some of those really difficult, confusing concepts in philosophy and all those isms that get chucked around. And today we're going to be talking about functionalism. Now, functionalism is a term that crops up right across philosophy, but it's probably going to be cropping up most. The most time you're going to hear about it is when you're thinking about philosophy of mind. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the general idea of functionalism, and then I'm going to tell you about how it crops up specifically in philosophy of mind. OK, so functionalism in philosophy in general is basically a kind of theory that focuses on a thing's function. OK, so what do we mean by function? Once we get clearer on that, we get an idea of what we mean by functionalism. Here's an analogy that people often use. Think about something like a vending machine. What is a vending machine really about? Well, you could look at the mechanism and see how it works and you could think, well, there's actually loads of different ways to do a vending machine, right? It could be a kind of a, a mechanism that you press the button and out comes your drink. Or there could be like a person in there who gives it to you. And there's loads of different ways of doing a vending machine. The important thing in a vending machine's being a vending machine, that is kind of what it is to be a vending machine, is it has to fulfill a certain function. Basically, the function is money goes in, you press a button and something comes out. And, you know, interesting example, because often vending machines don't work. So we can talk about things function even when on occasion it doesn't work. OK, so the function of a vending machine is money in, button pressed, drink or whatever coming out the other end. That's its function. And even when the machine doesn't work, we can still talk about it having that kind of function. Lots of different ways to understand functions in terms of causal processes, in terms of kind of teleology. That is what the purpose or end goal of this thing is. Lots of nuance there. Let's not get into that. OK, so in general, in philosophy, a theory would be called a functionalist theory if it thinks about the function of the thing in question rather than, as it were, its intrinsic working or its intrinsic structure. OK, so if we're thinking about, you know, money. We might have a functionalist theory about money that says, you know, doesn't matter so much what the tokens of money are, whether it's digital currency or notes or coins you know, precious metal or whatever. The important thing is the function, the fact that I can take one of these things and use it in a transaction to get some stuff that I want. It's the function of money that's important, not the physical token. OK, that's pretty much obviously the right kind of way to think about money of currency. OK, that's broadly speaking, a functionalist theory. OK, but where the term functionalism comes up most often in philosophy is when we're thinking about philosophy of mind. So often when you hear someone say functionalism, pretty much they're going to be talking about philosophy of mind. So what is the functionalist theory of mind? Well, it's a theory that says, let's focus on the functions that things have. OK, so when we're thinking about analysing mental states, we're talking about the function that they have. What kind of function is that? Well, we're going to be looking about inputs and outputs, like in the case of the vending machine, but also the interrelations between the mental state we're interested in and all the other mental states. OK, so let's take a case like belief. What is the function of belief? Well, it's something that takes certain observations of the world as input, certain interrelations between other mental states like other beliefs, but also desires and preferences and stuff like that. And all of that combines together to give outputs. And in this case, outputs are behaviour. So there is a certain relationship here between functionalism about belief and behaviorism. So look at the other video, philosophy glossary video on behaviorism, if you're not sure what that is. Functionalism isn't limited to explaining mental states in terms of behavior. That's probably a hopeless way of doing it. It looks at lots of other factors, inputs like observations, things that you've interacted with other people or whatever, interrelations between one mental state and all the other mental states you've got going on, as well as the behaviour that they all combine to produce. So a functionalist about belief would say belief is an interrelation between mental states that takes some observed input and interrelates with all the other mental states that you've got to produce some kind of behavioural output. What about cases like feeling pain? Well, a functionalist would say pain, an experiential state, something you experience, that too is a functional mental state. It takes in certain kind of inputs like damage to your body, like, you know, putting up your hand on a hot stove, certain kinds of interrelations with other mental states and output, typical displays of pain behaviour, 
kind of removing your hand from the stove and saying, ow. Typical in the sense that you don't have to do those, okay? You might be super stoic and you want to kind of show how tough you are so you don't exhibit any pain behavior. So here we're talking about typical outputs. In the same way that when we analyze the vending machine, we talk about typically you press the button, you put your money in and you get something out. But not always. And maybe with some vending machines, you rarely get what you want. Okay, so we can still talk about the function of a vending machine, even if it's broken. Similarly, we can still talk about the function of a mental state, even if it doesn't always lead to that kind of uh, that kind of behavioral output. Functionalism is one of the leading theories of mind going around today. It was kind of really popular in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, but I think it's still pretty popular. It's a physicalist theory, or at least it's compatible with physicalism. That is the idea that ultimately the mind is to be analysed, to be understood in terms of physical goings on or at least that the mind is dependent on the physical goings on. Okay, so if we're thinking about a mental state like belief or pain in terms of inputs and outputs, all of those would be specifiable in terms of physical descriptions, physical language, okay? If we can do that, then we would have a physicalist, functionalist theory of the mind. So lots of people who want to be physicalists, that is to say that the mind in some way depends on the brain, the body, the physical world around us, they like functionalism. They, they, they treat it as a, here's a good theory of mind that makes sense of how we can be physicalists about the mind. Okay, so there we have a super quick intro to functionalism about the mind. If you found it useful, give this video a thumbs up. That really helps me out. If you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. I'm going to be doing plenty more philosophy glossary coming up, so you can subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you back here soon. Mm -hmm.